Welcome back. You're still watching the SABC News Channel and the programs The Globe. Zimbabwe's finance minister says that his government's efforts to stabilize the country's ailing economy are bearing fruit and go beyond earlier projections. Mutuli Ngobe says that despite the shocks caused by the COVID-19 pandemic, Zimbabwe's economy is growing. The country, he said, had turned previous fiscal deficits into surpluses and projected a $1.2 billion current account surplus by year end. Surplus that were projection by year end was driving it is export growth and, and, and import curtailment, uh, import substitution, the two working together. So export growth uh, from the manufacturing sector, from the, and the mining sector in the main, including uh, our tobacco in the agricultural sector and cotton are driving uh, uh, export growth and that uh, uh, those numbers are up but we're seeing that the growth of imports also because of the domestic currency and import substitution in the mining sector uh, the import growth has slowed down relatively speaking resulting uh, but there's a third factor which is the capital inflows from the diaspora uh, uh, those have increased, as I said, by 33%. All that should result in a current account surplus of about $1.2 billion. And this is, we think this is even conservative. Uh, then coming to uh, other countries are shrinking, they're taking on more debt. No, we are not shrinking. No. You know what? In, in, if you look at uh, other countries, uh, as a minister, I'm not supposed to mention other countries, uh, but I'm going to. South Africa, US, UK, just those three. Companies are shutting down because of COVID, actually shutting down, but not in Zimbabwe. Since we said companies can reopen, they're not shutting down. I'm saying volumes are up or being maintained or volumes are recovered. I'm, I'm not seeing a similar pattern in, 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 in companies shutting down. So uh, that's our prognosis is that the impact of of COVID overall on Zimbabwe is not as deep as in other countries. But this pattern I'm describing is very similar to other countries in Sub-Saharan Africa, by the way. It's not only just unique to Zimbabwe. Outside South Africa, you're finding that, the, especially in East Africa, eh, 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 Rwanda, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, even Kenya and other countries, they have not been as severely impacted as, as is you know, the larger countries such as South Africa or UK, uh, US and, and so forth. So it's a very similar pattern uh, that, that, that you see in Zimbabwe, as in other, as in other countries. These companies are solid, they are well run, and their volumes are recovering, if not even improving. And, and that, that's why I'm saying I'm, I'm even more bullish now about economic recovery than I was deep in the middle of COVID in the second quarter. But we we're all gloomy at that moment, for, for example, because we had a shutdown, we didn't know where it was going, and you know. So, 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 but I, I'm, I'm a lot more you know, bullish uh, now. Well, for more on the Zimbabwean economic outlook, I'm now joined on the line from Harare by uh, Zimbabwean strategist and economist, Dr. Prosper Chitambara. Thanks so much indeed for joining us and uh, welcome to the program. Uh, you've heard the finance minister. He's very upbeat and very positive uh, about uh, the economy going forward. Do you share his optimism? Uh, when you look at uh, most of the growth projections for this year from uh, major international institutions like the World Bank, they actually show that the economy is going to shrink by probably around uh, minus 10 percent. So I, I think the projections from government have been a bit overly optimistic. I think the reality of the situation is that uh, I think uh, there are significant structural uh, challenges, structural and internal challenges that we need to, to address before we can go back to uh, an era of uh, positive uh, growth. And obviously that outlook has been affected quite uh, uh, adversely by the COVID-19 pandemic. All right, so what measures is he using? I mean, let's talk about the current account deficit. Um, does that help as a measure of uh, uh, the state of the economy? Okay, so there are basically two main macroeconomic aggregates. You have the current account balance uh, that you have mentioned, and also there is the fiscal uh, balance. So yes, 
uh, when you look at, for example, the fiscal position, we have attained a nominal fiscal surplus. But that, uh, that, that has been attained on the back of, uh, number one, significant cutbacks on critical social expenditures. Like when you look at our uh, public expenditure towards health, our public expenditure towards water and sanitation, uh, towards social protection, I think we are failing to meet regional and international benchmarks. In fact, uh, we have seen over the past years, and of course that, that has also been exacerbated by the uh, austerity framework of government, we have seen gross understanding of these critical social sectors. We have also seen government obviously increasing uh, taxes, uh, so that's part of uh, the macroeconomic thrust of uh, austerity. So yes, we have seen a nominal surplus on the fiscal situation, but that has been on the back of a uh, huge cutbacks in public expenditure and also a, an increase in taxes. And because of the increase in taxes, what it has done is to increase the cost of doing business. Uh, and as a result, Zimbabwe has lost the uh, competitiveness. We've also seen uh, an informalization of the economy. In fact, numbers from the International Monetary Fund actually revealed that Zimbabwe is the second highest informal economy in the world, accounting for around 60% of our GDP. And our own statistics from our statistic uh, agency show that around 76% of our total employment is actually informally employed. And when, now when you go to the other uh, position, which is the current account position, yes, there's also, there's also been a surplus, but that surplus has largely been on account of uh, significant reductions in uh, imports. Yeah, there hasn't been much improvement on the export side. Yes, I can hear you. Yes, yes, we can hear you. Carry on. Yeah, so there hasn't been much improvement uh, on the ex ex export side, but there's been significant reduction of our imports. So I think that is also accounted uh, for the for the surplus. But my view is that uh, for this for this surplus to be real, to be felt by the ordinary person on the ground, it must actually be the result in an improvement in their welfare, in an improvement in their well-being. Now, when you look at the numbers in terms of our poverty numbers, extreme poverty, for example, the World Bank. Is a figure that actually show that our extreme poverty, uh, the proportion of people that are in extreme poverty, has actually increased, and the projected even increased more uh, during this year of 2020. So maybe for want of a better way, I would call uh, the surplus probably a mirage in the sense that there is a huge disconnect between the situation of the ordinary person on the ground and um, the nominal numbers uh, that, that, that we are receiving uh, from official government statistics. Mm -hmm. When you look at the situation in the public health, the delivery system, the doctors um, on strike, our, our hospitals don't have uh, medicines and critical uh, equipment. Even right now the teachers, uh, and now we are opening schools, but the teachers are on strike. Uh, so I think the situation in terms of the social sectors, in terms of the developmental sectors, uh, they're actually showing a, a different picture. Yes, we need stability, but that stability has to be sustained uh, for it to, to be felt, the, the ordinary person on the ground. We are also in chronic high inflationary uh, environment. So yes, the numbers have gone down slightly, but we always created the, the official numbers because they are, they are based on is a shrinking formal economy. So development in the informal economy, which is now the economy in Zimbabwe, are actually not captured by the official uh, inflation numbers. But the, those numbers actually show that we are in chronic uh, high inflationary uh, environment. So I think the situation is uh, still very, very precarious. And I think there is need for more institutional reforms, need for more structural reforms, need for political reforms also to address the politically toxic uh, environment, because well, I think that's also a major source of the huge country risk or the, uh, the high political risk premium that again affects our investment outlook and our economic sustainability uh, going forward. All right, so you talk about the informalization of the economy. Would that explain then the statement that the finance minister says that we don't see companies in Zimbabwe closing down? Is that because there's very yeah, few yeah. companies open? I think that's because there are very, very few companies that are still uh, uh, formal. There are very few formal businesses. What we, we have experienced as a country over the past few years is the wrenching structural changes uh, typified by deindustrialization, obviously, that uh, informalization. So I think that's a major challenge, that most of our businesses are actually in the informal economy. And uh, they are informal. Why? I think one reason why businesses also have opted to go formal or to remain formal is because of the high tax regime. 
Uh, so business don't want to formalize because of the high, uh, the high compliance cost uh, of formalizing. And there's also the, the, the lack of competitiveness uh, for men uh, to, 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 to remain or to go uh, informal. And every year, we are, our colleges, our universities are churning out uh, hundreds of thousands of school leavers of graduates. And uh, those can't, are not being absorbed by that shrinking uh, formal economy. So when you look at our the key labor market challenge, then becomes the, these huge levels of informal employment. Only our unemployment figures are on the low side. Why? Because most of our people are actually taking out a living uh, in the informal in, in in economy.